Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch and this is the 13th of 15 videos in the mobile weather app series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in the series. In this video, we'll be improving the UI by handling keyboard dismissal and adding a clear button for our search field. We're also going to fix the cryptic error that we get when our CL geodecoder fails. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications when new videos in the series and other videos are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. Now, I never claim to be a UI expert. In fact, I'm pretty bad at it. But there are a couple of things here that we can do that should be fixed. If you've been running this in your simulator or in the canvas, you likely have never seen a keyboard appear. Let's run this in the simulator as if I were running on the phone and make sure that when I tap on the search field, the keyboard appears. So if you're not seeing the keyboard when you tap on the search field, type Command K. Enter a new city and tap on the search button. How do you get rid of that keyboard? One way to do that is to tap the return button and that dismisses the keyboard. However, I want it to be dismissed as soon as I tap the search button. And I learned this tip from Paul Hudson with Hacking with Swift. Create a new file and call it UI application plus extension. And in the file, change the import to UI kit. Now UI kit has a resign first responder function. So within this extension, create a new function called end editing. And within the body, we're going to send an action where our selector is the UI responder resign first responder method. And it'll go to nil, from nil, for nil. Creating this function will allow us to ask whatever has control to stop using the keyboard which in our case means we can dismiss the keyboard when we tap our search button. So where do we want to execute this function? Well, as soon as we execute the get weather forecast. So within the forecast list view model, in the first line of the get weather forecast, we'll call this function, which is UI application dot shared and editing. That fixes the issue. If you tap in the field, the keyboard appears again, and you have to tap return to dismiss it. Wouldn't it be nice if when we change the content of the location field and press return, not only does the keyboard dismiss, but it also performs a search? To do this, we have to add another option to the text field, and it's the on commit, and it takes a closure. Inside that closure, call the getWeatherForecast function again. This has the added benefit of dismissing the keyboard even if you're using your connected keyboard in the simulator. One more thing that I considered was adding a tap gesture recognizer to the list view so that if you tapped on the list, you could dismiss the keyboard. And this will work for this solution, but be aware that the tap gesture will take precedence over any underlying actions such as a navigation link, so you'll have to take that into consideration. There are a number of alternatives offered on Stack Overflow that you can check out. I'm hoping that the Resign First Responder functionality will be coming soon as a first-class citizen of SwiftUI. Now, one more thing that I want to do is to put an X over the text field so that if it's tapped, it'll clear out the text field. I can do this with an overlay of a button that will be in the trailing position. So I'll create an overlay and I'm going to leave the action empty at first. I'll create a button that is an image with a system name of xmark.circle. I'm going to set the foreground color to gray and I'll add some horizontal padding and finally, I can set that alignment to trailing. 
Now, what do I want to happen when I tap the button? Well, I want to set the location property of the forecast list view model to an empty string, and then set the forecast to an empty array. If I add this, however, and tap the button, nothing happens. If I go over to our forecast list view model, I see that this field is not a published property. So I can't make a change that's going to affect our view. All it will do is change our user defaults value. So to fix this, we need two things. First, we need to create another variable that uses our app storage key. Let's call it storage location for location user defaults. Now when the app first launches and our struct is initialized, I'll need to change its initializer. We no longer need to compare location to an empty string. We can set location to our new storage location and then get the weather forecast. So no matter what, we're getting the weather forecast. However, if we've cleared our location field, we don't want to make that API call. Instead, we want to empty out our forecast array. Well, we can do that in the start of our function. The first thing is to set storage location to the value of our location's published property. And then, after we've dismissed the keyboard, I can check to see if the location is an empty string. And if it is, I don't want to make that API call. I'll just set forecast to an empty array. Otherwise, I will call the API. Now there's one more thing that has to be done though. In our overlay button, when we set the location to an empty string, we want to call the get weather forecast so that it can set the storage location and set the forecast array to empty. Let's test this out now. If I do a search for Vancouver, I get the forecast, and then I can clear the field and the forecast disappears. If I stop and start the preview, the empty location is still there and no forecast is appearing. If I enter a new location like Lahaina and get the forecast and then stop and start the preview, it's remembered and the forecast is displayed. Now, there's one last thing that's bothering me. The errors that I'm getting from the CL geodecoder aren't very helpful. For example, if I just enter the letter V and try a search, I get this error, KCL error domain error 8. If I turn off wireless, the error is number 2. There might be other errors, so how do I catch these and respond with something that makes sense to my users? Back in the forecast list view model, this error is a generic NS error. So when we print the localized description, we get that information. Well, it turns out though that the CL geodecoder creates a specific error, which is of type CL error. So in our if let error case, we can cast our error as a CL error. And then we can switch on CL error dot code, which is that number. If we let Xcode generate the switch cases for us, we get them all. Their enums and each one corresponds to an error code number. Well, what we can do is we can group a bunch of these together that would have resulted from a location error and respond accordingly, like these three location unknown, geocode found no result, and geocode found partial result. And then we can set our app error with our own NS localized string. Again, I'll leave the comment empty. If you're using localization, that comment will be useful to your translator. The other one I want to report specifically on is the network error. And then for the default, I'll just go with the generic errors localized description.
Let's test this now, first with a location error. That's better. How about a network error? That's better too. Back in Content View, just one more thing. I want to make the overview a little more prominent, so I'm going to set the overview text as a font of title. So if I run this in the simulator, I can switch between light and dark modes, and you see it's looking quite presentable. Let me switch to Lahaina. If only we could safely travel during this pandemic, I know where I'd rather be at this moment. I'm sure that those of you who are not design challenged like me can do a better job. This has pretty much finished our app, but before I finish the series, there's two more things that I want to do. I want to show you how you can easily create an app icon and launch screen, and finish off by giving you a taste of the future. I'll be converting our API service to use the new combined framework.